And we're going to look now at an overview of the stereo workflow within Silhouette. Because all of the things that we can do in 2D, we can also do in Stereo 3D as well. With a little help from the correct setup. Okay, so we have our original 2D clip here with our little Santa Claus and his reindeer. Lovely. And we've got a perfectly normal session started up. But you can see in my sources, I have two clips. I have a left-hand view and a right-hand view of the same clip. So if we have a look in the trees window and have our source active, if we come down into the parameters here and have a look at our stream, we can see that we have our left-hand eye set to this file, which is our original source file. And it's called L for left. What we can do is we can use this drop down menu to select any other source that we have in our sources window. And I can use that to take the right eye. And as soon as we do that, we see that the viewer changes a little bit up here because we're now set up to work with stereo files. So now we can see the left hand view, the right hand view, I can also see the left and right hand views. And if I pan around here, you'll see that both the left and the right update for me. I can view these either horizontally or if I click on here, I can view them vertically as well. If that makes more sense for the particular footage you're working on. Let's make this horizontal for now. I have another button called stereo line, which is currently grayed out. We're going to come back to that in just a couple of minutes. But we also have Anaglyph Preview. So if you put on your 3D glasses now, we have a Red Cyan Anaglyph Preview of the scene. And that's working very nicely. Let's turn that off one second. And I can also click on this 3D, which will bring up a 3D viewer window for me as well. And if I right click on here, we can choose what type of 3D we're seeing. We can either see interlaced, with uh, left first or right first, if you're working with a monitor that supports interlaced 3D. Or we can choose any form of the anaglyph, color, gray, half color, or optimized. And we can have this on the main window, or we can drag it off onto a secondary window and work it there. And we can even put this to full screen, take this to one to one, or zoom it to fit. So those are the 3D viewer options we have. How do we work with this within a node? Well, let's have a look at our Roto node for a second. What I've got is I've got one object at the moment, which I've rotoed over a, uh, a couple of frames. And if we take a look down here, you can see that this layer and this shape is associated with the left eye view. So if we have a look in the right eye over here, you can see we have no shapes currently active and the left we do. So one of the ways to do this is to do all of our work on one eye, our hero eye. Right click on the layer, go stereo, duplicate, and that will create another layer for me that is now on the right eye. But as we see here, obviously because these layers aren't equal, otherwise we wouldn't have any stereo effect, we have to make a few changes on the right eye to get it matching up to the side of our sled. And this is where we can start to use the stereo offset to do a lot of our work for us. So remember we had this button that was grayed out just a moment ago. Well, if I click on this now, it's going to show me the left and the right eye over the top of each other with a, a difference mode. So anything that's gray means the pixels between the two are the same. But where it's not gray, you can see that we are offset here. So what I can do is I can manually click and drag to try and line this up. So if I was looking, if you look at these stars over here, if I line these stars up there, it means we're going to be lined up for that depth. If I line us up for the building, it means we're going to be lined up over there. There we go. Now I can use the arrow keys as well to just sort of get us in the area. But what we really want to do is we want to line ourselves up for the sled because that's what we've been rotoing. And here's a nice keyboard shortcut for you. If you hold down Alt, Shift, and have a look, our cursor turns to a crosshair. If I click on that there, it's going to automatically try to find the depth that we want to get to. So if I line us up here with this sled, 
that's looking good. So the sled's pretty much there. And as you can see, as we go further and further out, they get more and more distant away from each other. That's cool. That means we've got the stereo offset set up properly for this sled. So now I can turn off my stereo align and you'll see the sled shape now is much better aligned than it was previously. And all I need to do now is make any small changes because of the perspective change between the two eyes. I can just make the small changes here and get that lined up a lot better and a lot quicker. And the same goes over here. Might just do a few small changes, not going to do too much there, you get the idea. And now that right eye is also rotoed in properly. Now if the object changes in depth, say the sled was to move further into the scene, if I come into the layer, you can see I've got a stereo offset parameter here, which is keyframable. So we can keyframe the depth as well. That's also going to help us to reduce the amount of actual hard rotor work that we have to do between the two eyes. Now because of doing it this way, we've actually got these two objects linked together. So you can see when I select one of them, it actually highlights both here. So we can see these two objects are actually linked. And if we need to, we can manually link other objects together so long as they've got the same number of points by right clicking, going stereo and link. You see, because these are already linked, we've only got the unlink there. So we don't want to do that. What that lets us do though, is if we're in left and right hand view here, and let's come over to a place where we haven't done any roto work, something yeah, around about there maybe. If I have both of these objects selected now, and come into transform, if I just move one on one side, it's going to move them in both eyes. And similarly, if I come over to the right hand side and move over here, then it's going to update that on both eyes as well. So again, another great little time saver. But if we only want to change one in one eye, we just have one of the objects selected. And even though they're linked together, because we only have one selected, it's going to let us move them individually. There we go. But with both selected, we move both at the same time. And the same idea holds true for other nodes as well. So if we look at this as paint now, if I come back to my left hand view. So if I just create a layer here and come over to my stereo offset one more time, let's do the, uh, actually do the building over here. So hold down Alt and Shift, and I can just select the offset to be on that building there and turn the stereo line off now. And if I come into drawing on the left and right one more time, we'll just take a regular color here and maybe take a, a beautiful green that we can properly see. You can see now that I can paint over the same places on the building here and here. And again, that's because I'm in left and right view. If I was only in the right hand view and I painted on one of the windows, that's only going to paint that in the right hand view. Similarly, if I'm only in the left hand view and paint one of the windows down here, that's only going to paint that in the left hand view. If you want to paint something else at a different depth, say for example, we want to paint something on the side of the sled here, well, we would create another layer. So let's just call this one building, spell it correctly. There we go, and create another layer here. It's created two layers because I'm in left and right view. I can easily just delete one of those layers without worrying about it. And I'll call this one sled. Do the same thing as we did previously, come up to stereo align, shift and alt, align those up there, turn stereo align off, make this white. There we go, and that is painting with the correct offset now. And we can of course do this on multiple frames still using the auto paint as we saw in a previous tutorial. Or if we've forgotten particular strokes or we've only painted on one eye and we want to copy it over to the other eye, we can use auto paint to duplicate from the left to the right here. All we need to do is make sure that the correct layer is selected in our transform before we do our auto paint.
One final thing I want to show you, and let's just turn off the roto and the paint here, is if we're working on a stereo clip, but we only want to do an effect to one of the views, one of the eyes, say for example we need to do some color balancing on a particular eye to, to match up the two views, we can do that as well. If we've got different sources, as we have here, and let's start up a new session and just bring those in, and of course one split views. What I can do is put my two sources in the trees window, do whatever I need to do. Let's say I need to do a color correct on the right hand view here. And just tint that a little bit over there just to color balance it. So we see the difference between those two. What I can do to bring those together if I want to do any sort of stereo work now is come in and we will look for a node that's called merge views. And that's also found under the image category. So now the merge views has three inputs. It has a left, a right, and a depth. So if we plug our left into here, our right into here, all of a sudden, take a look at the viewer, we're now primed to work in stereo again. So that's, let's just delete the output there. That's if we've got two separate files. If on the other hand, we're working on uh, one file, let's just push these over here for a second. Let's say we have an EXR file with the left and right uh, in the same image. What we can do instead is use these split views to come in and that has one input but has three outputs, has a left, a right and a depth again. So now we can do the color correction again on the right eye using this, using this method. Boom. And then bring those back together using the merge views. So plug in the left from the split views, the right from the color correct. And again, we have our stereo workspace set up for us. And that's a quick overview of working in stereo.